Hi and welcome to the 51st episode of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Is Reportage and This Is Reportage family and I'm a photographer too. The podcast is going to be a little bit different going forward as with the launch of This Reportage family a few months ago, our sister site for documentary family photography, we're going to be featuring family photographers on the podcast as well as wedding photographers too. It's still going to be the same fun mix of photography, life and personal stories as the podcast has always been just as much, if not more so, about the people, their stories, what makes them tick, as it has been about the photography itself. But we'll just be talking to photographers who specialise in both disciplines going forward. For some episodes, I'll be talking to people who specialise in families. In others, I'll be talking to people who only do weddings. And for others, I'll chat to people who do both. I hope that you'll still want to listen to the photographers who work in a different field as what you do because the skills and tips we discuss really are virtually always so valid between both wedding and family coverage and there's often universal business advice too but also because as I've said these podcasts are really more about the people and their life experiences and stories are always so interesting and insightful. Today I'm really excited to be talking to the fab Alice Chapman. Alice is a documentary family photographer based in Cambridge in the UK and is currently ranked number one in the UK after our first two awards collections on This Is Reportage Family with seven Reportage Family Awards and a Family Story Award too. Alice shares so much today including her top tips for documentary family photography, the story behind one of her specific Reportage Family Awards, her journey into her photography career, which day she would choose to live over and over again, being on the other side of the camera and having her own family photographed, life in these corona times, children, plants, and much, much more. And before we get on to Alice, just a little reminder about last week's special 50th episode, if you haven't checked it out yet. We did a special game show format with three returning podcast guests, Adam Johnson, Anna Hardy, and Adam Riley, and it was a lot of fun. I laughed so much, and it's been lovely to hear from some of you to say that you laughed along too. Within that episode, there are two chances to win a This Is Reportage or This Is Reportage family t-shirt too, so do check it out. Lastly, just wanted to say again a huge thanks to everyone who has sent me kind words about the podcast or has shared something about it on their Insta stories or if you've reviewed us on iTunes. I massively, massively appreciate it. Thank you. A personal thanks to Jonathan Ryder who left us this five-star review on iTunes. Jonathan said, This is Reportage is helping to set the standard internationally in documentary wedding photography and Alan has assembled some of the very best photographers in the field to chat to. Each episode is relaxed, fun and really informative. It's hard not to learn something significant from each one. Tune in. Thanks so much, man. Made my day to read that. Thank you. Right. Enough of me. On to Alice. Hey, Alice. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm, yeah, really good. Thank you. Really good. 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 How's things with you? Okay. We're right in the middle of half term. So it's the usual chaos that we've all got a bit used to this year. Mm. so navigating that as usual (laughs) (laughs) it's mad to think that we homeschooled for quite a long time isn't it now I know we did six months of homeschooling and then we just had to do two weeks um up until a few days ago and it was just awful it sort of killed us straight away you had to do it again yeah we had to do it again so I'm a bit behind with work and stuff but I think that's just the way it's going to be this year isn't it oh it's been mad hasn't it yeah it's been mad have you got um you got multiple children then two so, yeah. okay that's nice same as me same as me I've got <laughs> a, a five and eight year old yours are similar ages are they or um six and nine and so oh. my cuckoo clock's just gone off that's not a pet that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I that, um spoiling the audio <laughs> sorry no that's all good that's all good I like that kind of thing that's all good um yeah so you're in you're near Cambridge are you yeah so I'm in a tiny village outside of Cambridge but I say I'm a Cambridge photographer okay um, well, that's cool yeah. how near to Cambridge is it it's about half an hour, hour. Oh, okay cool. yeah I love Cambridge you know I just love it I just think it's one of the most beautiful places it's one of my favorite city in the UK I think it's oh. awesome so where yeah. about, are you down in did I read you were in Devon or something or something I'm in Cornwall so close oh. yep Cornwall so I'm yeah, one of so. those people who think for the same thing and that's really like <laughs> <offensive. laughs> sorry <laughs> that's okay I don't get offended because I'm not um, I was actually originally from the Midlands so I'm not oh. actually Cornish or anything but yeah I've been to Cambridge for a few weddings and I just love it it's oh, awesome are you did you grow up in that area then no yeah. so I'm from Yorkshire oh cool okay. um you can't really tell anymore um no. but the Yorkshire Derbyshire border so I grew up in the Peak District um and oh, Sheffield nice. so I've um, been in Cambridge for 20 
oh, something seven years I think uh, okay um, cool yeah mm-hmm. uh, I went to <laughs> it's funny just not talking about photography at all yet but this is good I went <laughs> I went yeah we will we will um I went to university in Yorkshire at um Bretton Hall in Wakefield is that... oh is that an art specialist you know? it is it was yeah so it's oh, the campus I applied on... there oh really oh cool yeah. and is it that you had to do a bit of everything you couldn't sort of say oh I'm a this sort of artist you had to be an all-round oh I'm not sure because there were specific things I actually did English with drama there so oh, but yeah. but my wife who I met there did acting and I, I had like a sculptor friend and so it was very arty yeah oh well I did English and I met my other half who did English on the first day at university oh, wow. That's yeah. surreal. I met I met my wife about the fourth day and we've been together since then. That's a weird coincidence. So, Alice, OK, let, let, let's talk about photography there in a way. Okay. So, yeah. Tell us about you. How did you get into photography? How did you get into shooting like families specifically? What's what's well, your journey? I was a hobbyist photographer. Um, and so this is my third career. Um, okay. So I started out working in publishing and book selling and then I ended up working in HR um yeah photography sort of came third um so I was never really interested in shooting people I used to photograph a bit of street photography um sorry I didn't turn my sound on my phone (laughs) um yeah and then when um I started a family I just suddenly realized like how powerful photographs of the people that you would sort of throw yourself in front of a train for can be um and I'd never kind of felt like that before so a whole new like, level of of kind of importance of photography opened up to me. And then I had that really classic, quite boring and cliche sort of journey of um, photographing my own kids and photographing my friends' kids. Um, and I set my business up kind of, um, kind of on the side of my main job, but very slowly with some quite shit photography <laughs> on a horrendous website with terrible pricing. Um, didn't know what I was doing at all. And then... I'm kind of glad it was kind of low key for the first few years, about three years like that. And then about six years ago, set up properly. Um, Okay. Yeah. So mainly family photography. I do nursery photography as well. And I do some commercial work and I do mentoring. Um, I don't do weddings. So it's kind of like, yeah, anything but weddings. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's probably good this year. I do feel... We oh, feel for the people that are mainly wedding. That things. is so true. I mean, you're good not being in the wedding industry this mm-hmm. year. So that's cool, though. So you, yeah, you were photographing your own kids. So this was like about nine, eight years ago, was it then? I guess. Yeah, yeah, um, and sort of taking some quite terrible pictures. Really, <laughs> looking back. How did you get better then, personally yourself? You know, did um, you just learn yourself from experience and books and stuff, or did you go on any courses or anything? So, oh, I did an evening class in my oh, local cool. village hall and it oh, was right. a paparazzi photographer who once had a picture of Princess Diana on the front page of a newspaper and he oh, showed okay. it as every week <laughs> um, <laughs> that was that was very early days um so the, the the very first thing I did to get better was before I set the business up I was working in a in the software sector with some incredibly technical people and some very creative people and um someone set up a photo club in lunch times it was like an hour every two weeks and we used to set each other homework so there was one theme and you had to come up with a creative interpretation of that theme and show um a few photographs and i started out with very quiet and like quite rubbish technically People were talking about F this and F that. And I hadn't yeah. got a clue. And they're not swearing. About. They're not swearing either. No, no. And we just thought, I don't know what this means. I'm going to sit here and smile. Um, but then I, I felt that I was quite good at the creative side. And just very, very slowly, but surely over quite a few years, just developed some technical skills. Um, and that was before I set the business. So that was when I was still a hobbyist. But I think that really helped me just being around people who were passionate about it and just did it for fun. And, and were really happy to spend their free time just talking about it, talking about technique and things. Um, and I think that helped me sort of feel encouraged. And I bought my first DSLR when I was doing that. And then as a professional, I've, I've invested a lot in education. And I, I think it's one of the most important things you can do. Um, creative education, technical business education. I've trained with American documentary photographers virtually. It's all virtual okay. these days, though. That's true, yeah. <laughs> it's the year yeah. of virtual training. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember in 2015, um, I did my first virtual workshop with Kirsten Lewis oh, in cool, America. Yeah. 
and it was it was something like less than 200 pounds like it was in dollars but I remember it was like I think 175 pounds or something and I was really like agonizing over whether to spend that money um which is sort of hilarious to me now because it was so cheap um yeah. can't get personal news for that much these days quite yeah. rightly and then um, <laughs> And I think if I hadn't have started that process of education with, with her and her sort of contemporary educators, then God knows where I'd be. I'd probably be, I don't know, at a little pop-up store in a shopping centre somewhere with pumpkins, <laughs> fake pumpkins and things. I wonder why you're thinking of pumpkins right now. <laughs> yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with you, obviously, but, you know, it's, it's the genre. I, I just completely fell in love with this genre. And, and until I kind of came across those, educators i didn't understand that it was a that it was actually a a viable commercial genre in itself um right, yeah yeah so that was a real turning point i think lots of people have kind of got the same story who've come through training in the same way that you realize the style that you've always kind of been drawn to shooting is a thing and it's quite mind-blowing that's very cool yeah. isn't it yeah that's yeah. really cool uh, you, you mentioned early on there how you do lots of other things like nursery photography and commercial mm. photography is that nursery is that children or plants <laughs> children but okay. i'm actually um talking to a plant business to do some commercial photography in the new year oh wow okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> children yeah, so it's, okay, it's cool. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay cool so do you get like kind of a contract with the particular nurseries then and things and... No, I've, got, I've got regular clients kind of just like i have regular family clients and then um mm -hmm. and i do i do about one a month up to 10 a year um and i go in and i hang out um in the nursery and take so I, I do environmental portraits as well a couple of sitting down pictures but the majority of the pictures are the kids just hanging out doing what they do at nursery and I, I choose nurseries that have got an ethos that kind of matches my brand so Montessori and or and like forest school so they're all covered okay. in running around outside no oh, that sounds fun as well yeah mm. it is I it's so much fun it's brilliant and you mentioned about having regular clients then there. Do you find, do you have quite a few families then that are kind of regular clients? So they come back to you kind of year after year and things. Yeah, yeah. Which considering some of them are from the very early days, it's quite, yeah. <laughs> I kind of, uh, someone said, oh, could we do an album of our, the first photo shoot? And I was like, um, if you must. <laughs> Look at the pictures. But yeah, it's it's lovely to to sort of show our family growing um, and you get to know them. And, and one of the things I'm really drawn to is photographing like real little, um, like unique bits of people's characters. And I think you look back at very early age pictures and you can see that in people. And then they're suddenly like three or five or seven. And you're like, oh, that face you know that is that side of them and it was always there it's lovely oh, that's nice yeah. yeah that's so lovely I mean to, for you as well just yeah to see those families grow and to be yeah. the documentarian of that family in a way yeah. is really cool and really it, meaningful as well it's such a privilege as well it's such a privilege um mm. I've got one family I'm shooting in a couple of weeks and I think I think they started with one child and a baby they've got three children three dogs now oh right wow it's, it's just like the best kind of chaos <laughs> that's cool cool and we have to be able to embrace chaos don't you if you're shooting totally. weddings or families you have to embrace chaos I think. Yeah. Yeah. it's funny you mentioned earlier on how you do yeah as you say nursery commercial family but not weddings is that was ever there is that a big reason why not done weddings or just not um, fancy it or? oh there's lots of reasons um yeah. <laughs> so i yeah um i so I, I don't i do all day shoots i do day in the life but i i don't actually book a lot of them um, but I, I always said I didn't want to have whole Saturdays, like every Saturday, like all day booked up Makes because sense. I didn't want to take that time away from my family. That was the main reason. Um, and I had the stress of it as well. Because if I if I like, mess up a family shoot, the worst case scenario, if like the card dies or something, I say, oh, I'll just come back next weekend and yeah. be free or something. But of a thought of not, you know, losing wedding photos. But um, I think That's the main true. reason is that I just don't really feel weddings. Um, so I'm not married. We're not married. Um, and yeah, I guess I just don't really identify with the whole the day, really. It just, it just feels mm, a little I bit. 
Do you know what I mean? I totally get that. Yeah. And I yeah. totally get all your reasons as well. And it's funny. Yeah. You're saying about if a card fails, you can go back next week. Um, so I did a family shoot for the first time in a while, like a few days ago. Uh-huh. I was I was just as nervous as doing a wedding, though, you know, even though that totally makes sense what you're saying. It's really weird. But huh. yeah. do you get nervous shooting or not? Um, not so much these days. I, I do a little bit. Um, I, the, the most nervous I ever feel is when I put my camera in my bag at the end. And I know that that's it. I can't take any more shots and I drive home. And I'm fine now, but in the early years, I would drive home with this knot in my stomach. Like, oh my God, I haven't got anything or everything would be terrible. And that took quite a while to wear off. Um, Yeah, but I mean, just quick going back to weddings. I think that I I do get asked to do them just because people don't always really take in the information on your website. Mm, They just think I'm a photographer. photographer. Um, But Mm. I'd actually really love to do small weddings um, without the actual ceremony. I'd quite like, I love the idea of the reception afterwards. I'd really like to shoot one of those, but. Ah, yeah. Well, well, this year is the year for um, small (laughs) weddings, but I guess not big, not the party wise, is it? No, no, no. But you could do that, you know, I bet you there's still a niche of people looking for just the party being captured as well. Maybe, yeah. That'd be cool to be just a wedding party uh, capture, I think. That, that does sound a... cool, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, at, the t- at the time of recording this podcast, Alice, uh, which is end of October 2020, just in case people listen to this, you know, in the future or whatnot, um, you're currently ranking as the top UK photographer on this reportage family, which is awesome. You've won seven reportage. I shot that somewhere. <laughs> Danger. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but at the moment, yeah, you are, which is awesome, though. I mean, you've won seven reportage family awards and the Family Story Award, for, and that's just from the first two collections, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, so not to drop you in it too much, but what then, what is the key to great documentary family photography? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I feel quite dropped in it now. Um, I know. So I think I, I did have a little, because I know you asked a couple of questions and we we um, contributed to some blogs. I thought I'd better have a look what I wrote there so I can at yeah. least be consistent. Um, but I think I wrote about trust and I think, that for me is the most important thing it's building that trust with the client mm. um so that they can be themselves because it's it's one thing to say to someone oh, just be yourself but quite another thing to actually do all the things that you have to line up for them to enable them to be themselves um right. talk to them in advance give them that really work in a preparation stage so you're not just saying don't wear matching clothes but you're actually showing you know in your portfolio you show all these pictures of people that are in their pajamas or that look a little bit scruffy say or or that well, that's probably not the right way to put it but <laughs> you, you kind of you have to like walk the walk as well as just give them instructions everything about the, the, the output of your business has to build that trust so the next person you photograph does feel they can be themselves because it's actually quite challenging to do that um mm-hmm. so that's the client trust and then trusting the documentary process is a huge 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 part of it um and actually not not just getting a few candid shots here and there but approaching the whole shoot with a documentary mindset which is at the very basic level don't mess with stuff don't Mm. move things don't try and don't try and um you know like change things or oh let's just move this out of the way or turn around for me um but it's it's really getting in the flow of the documentary approach which I think there's an authenticity that comes through the pictures when you shoot like that Mm. and it's sometimes it's hard to put your finger on what it is when you look at a picture but I think you can just see it Mm. hopefully yeah definitely have you always shot like that way shooting families in that you know that real documentary way or is it something that as your style kind of evolved over the years it's evolved so for the first few years I was a complete shambles um (laughs) And I was, so I used to um, kind of do a bit of documentary. Well, I thought it was, but I just did a few documentary type pictures, which is exactly what I said doesn't work if you candid shots. Mm. I'd do a bit of lifestyle. I'd be like, oh, well, let's throw the kid up in the air by this tree. Um, <laughs> but only if you would anyway, you know, just to kind of from a safety point of view. Didn't really think mm. about it from a <laughs> point of view. Um, but also in the very early days, I would take a um, – background screen with me to people's oh, house. right okay yeah. yeah so i i was really struggling to find my style and find my feet and like i mentioned about that moment you realize that documentary family photography is a genre 
that was uh, okay. such a game changer for me because that gave me permission to say, right, I don't have to do this. It completely anyway makes no sense to offer studio style slash lifestyle slash documentary because it's just a mess. It's a complete mess. I didn't have a long period of doing all, all three. Um, but I do remember those days and I just didn't know that you could niche and market that niche in the way that we do now. Um, right, okay. I wish I could just go back in time and yeah, have a word in myself. Um, <laughs> oh, it's all a progress. I mean, and process though, isn't yeah, it? And all these things happen yeah. for a reason, I think. So that's, yeah. all, that's all cool. Um, and you were recently on the other side of the camera, I believe. Didn't you have um, York Play yeah. Studios yeah. that document your family? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. cool. How was, how was that being on the other side of the camera? I didn't eat a biscuit for two weeks before that shoot. It was, <laughs> um, it was wonderful. And it was actually incredibly valuable as a um like professional photographer to go through that process of hiring someone and um, preparing for the shoot and worrying about the things you worry about because it, yeah, yeah. I hadn't done it for quite a long time and I think it, it's going to really help me when I talk to my clients even more it was brilliant um yeah is it, was it Dom um, and Liam or is one of them or both, both or? yeah oh, um, cool. and the other thing it's kind of it really helped me kind of get my head around was um with gear because they shoot Fuji mirrorless and I didn't hear any clicks and I couldn't tell when they were shooting and when they were lining up with shots um and it was so it was so seamless and I'm very aware when I shoot that you can hear the click and every now and again a client will say oh how many do you take you know because you'd never ever tell them actually yeah. I mean, <laughs> ever <laughs> I made that mistake once never again um <laughs> oh because then when you deliver the images they're expecting like so yeah, many more the other three thousand you know yeah. <laughs> yeah no i once told someone um that i took how many hundreds it was very early days now i think i only t i took like like six or seven hundred or something and then um, i made them sick of saying that and then i had all these emails like can we buy the other one? <laughs> no. Oh yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> same at a wedding you know that you don't you never tell yeah never tell yeah. that's true um but yeah, yeah so so you're yeah. not are you thinking to go mirrorless then well that i think possibly in the future yeah because the other thing is um i'm getting on a bit now and <laughs> um yeah they spent the whole time standing up you know you know like lying down on the floor like i do all the time or having to sort of like squeeze into a corner to the the physical difference eating when you can look at the viewfinder so you can look at the screen rather than look through the viewfinder um so true yeah do you yeah. what do you shoot with yeah so uh, a couple of years ago i changed to sony sony a9 so oh, okay. it, it is be i just fancy a change in system you know not because i didn't just follow because everyone else was doing it but i just wanted a change in system just to reinvigorate it for me and mm -hmm. honestly yeah i love it that that pure silence and i just use the screen 100 percent of the time i don't use the viewfinder mm -hmm. at all now it's it's awesome yeah so i definitely recommend yeah very, very good. what are you using at the moment as well and, um, oh okay cool not, well, that would not help the silence them, but um yeah because in cambridge there's a lot of you know a academic conferences um yeah so i think silence would would be great for that so mm -hmm, i think definitely. i have to yeah start budgeting for a may maybe a system change oh i know and it's never cheap and it's definitely not the year to be doing buying loads of cameras and stuff is it as uh -oh. well so. but um i'm re i'm really into budgeting for everything so i think if you think you need to maybe buy a camera within, within the next like two or three years you put it in the budget now so this oh. might well be the year to do it <laughs> <laughs> that's good advice to do stuff like that and how you know because we can't avoid the subject how how has it been you know this year for you and your business you know obviously the wedding as you mentioned earlier on the wedding industry has hit really hard what how, mm. what has it been like um from the family photography way so i think family photography hasn't been hit as hard as weddings but it certainly stopped for a while um mm. my nurse is closed for a while but that was the first thing I did after the first wave was get back into the nurseries um okay. mm. the ones that were open shooting things a little bit differently conferences of so so one of my clients is um Cambridge Institute of Public Health I photographed their annual conference so that's gonna be online <laughs> this year oh, right. obviously <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah yeah so I think the challenging thing is is not is managing the uncertainty Mm. um and how long is it going to last for um i'm back out shooting now but we don't know if it's if we're going to have a lockdown again and i think in this country we we've all all the way along this year we've been a few weeks behind europe and you can you know we're all i think you know it's lovely to be very well networked with photographers in other countries and 
we can kind of look ahead a bit to how how it's impacting them and think okay i might not be able to shoot any families or you know weddings for x amount of time i know this country's starting again maybe we'll maybe we'll be able to do it soon um but it's just managing the uncertainty which is something i do struggle with because I'm, I'm such a planner okay yeah yeah I totally yeah. understand that though and how you know how have you found it emotionally over this time it's been a roller coaster for me you know I've been really yeah. up and down it's been I'm normally very level you know on, on a level I really am and I've just for the first time in my life really I've had real down periods over this time mm-hmm. it's been, yeah how have you found it yeah it's it's been so tough in lots of different ways so I remember I can't like it was probably towards the end of March I remember sitting on the sofa one evening just completely fell apart um just because it was, it was coming sort of slowly but surely and then it seemed to suddenly be instant which sounds weird but it it felt like that that it felt like overnight the thing that I'd invested in and built up and put my heart and soul in this thing that enabled me to earn money to support my family or half support my family um just it felt like overnight that had gone and I didn't know when it was coming back so I can't do my job I'm self-employed I, we didn't at that point know if there's self um self-employed um income support scheme oh yeah, Whereas, yeah. Well, let's not talk about that um <laughs> <laughs> or we can but you know it'll get a bit sweary yeah um, <laughs> um we didn't know if that was coming right and it, when it came it came very late so there was a really long period of time street we didn't know when we were going to earn money again and I think we were trying to do things like you know sell product for our past clients um Mm. you know you can earn from education as well but it was also a difficult time when everyone was struggling with emotions and you got very careful about jumping up and down waving a flag saying oh give me money for something Mm, you know it just wasn't you got to read the room a little bit so it was Mm -hmm. just everything on hold for a bit and I didn't feel like shooting for quite a long time right Uh, okay yeah I just didn't have the I didn't have the t- spark. Oh, I get that. Yeah. I yeah. Get that. Yeah. For like <sighs> um, two months, I guess. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, a mad time. It's just a mad time, isn't it? It's a mad, mad yeah. time. It's, it's surreal in a way. Sometimes you go to bed at night and just think, you know, just feel like some kind of weird, kind of like a sto- like a film or something you're watching. Like you're yeah. not quite in it. <laughs> Just really, really bizarre. Um, let's change tack. Let's change tack, okay. Alice. Let's change tack. Okay. So are you a Netflix or other streaming TV service fan at all? Have you got any recommendations? Well, photography related or just like normal? No, life? no. Just anything um, that's good that you No, Yeah, we've got Netflix. I, I got into The Crown. And oh, okay. I'm waiting cool. for yeah. the, next, the next series of The Crown, which I think is coming out soon. So, yeah, okay. I'm quite into that. Cool. Um, I kind of end up watching a lot of kids stuff that's just on. <laughs> it's like the TV is always on. <laughs> and I've had a oh, of like theme tunes to these really shit kids TV programs <laughs> my kids watch. <laughs> yeah, the, the Crown actually, I really like. I started to um, notice the um, cinematography in it. Actually, it was. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was really like beautifully. Um, lots of symmetry and lots of balance in it, which was mm-hmm. lovely. That's cool. Yeah, um, yeah. I should. Well, I've seen the first series of that. Is there quite a few series now? Then is there I think there's three. Think. Uh, okay. Um, mm. I'm not quite sure. I should watch more of it. I did enjoy it. It was good. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> um, okay, another random question. Okay. Alice. Cool. If you had, <laughs> I like to mix it up. It's good to mix it up. Yeah. Uh, so if... random. It's yeah, it's random. totally random. <laughs> if you had three wishes, what would you wish for? And you can't well, wish for more wishes. Oh, I was going to say that's always the first. Yeah, <laughs> you can't you can't? Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm crap at questions like this because I'd have to like <laughs> analyze it and get back to you with like a proper, really good answer. But off the top of my <laughs> head, um, well, I'd wish for this damn pand- pandemic to be over. That's, that's a good the first one. one. I that's think, yeah. Oh, and um, well, there's other things happening in the world this year. I just wish the world would go back to normal because. Mm. Um, it's not normal at the moment, and yes. So I'm gonna... I think that's a great wish. You don't need. I think that is. We just need that one wish. <laughs> <Yeah>. I think. <laughs> so I think is it this time next week or later on? Like within within a week, I'd like there to be some nice news coming out of America, which sets the world uh, back yeah. back to normal. That would be good, wouldn't it? As well, yeah. 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 Is that two? That's two. Yeah. What's your third? Yeah. Um. Oh, I don't know. 
don't know. I think those two are just very good wishes anyway. <laughs> they're pretty good, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Let's go with two. Let's go. I'll have two. a PlayStation 5. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's in a couple of weeks, isn't it? Or something. Yeah. Do yeah. you game at all? Do you like your gaming? To. I used mm. to. Yeah. Um, but now my kids do. So I'm pretty good at Super Mario Kart, is it? Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Super Mario Kart. Awesome. Yeah. I play yeah. that with my eight year old daughter, actually, as well. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. I've got that. Like, do you know, for, have you got a Switch? A Nintendo Switch? Yes. Well, my oh. son's got a Switch. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. do you know, have you seen that Mario Kart thing that's come out now with an actual physical cart with a camera on the front and then it goes around your lounge and stuff but then you're using the switch to like play mario kart and it puts on like enemies like and this it's actually going around your room and stuff no (laughs) (laughs) i know they've just released it it's like last week it's it's gonna be that'd be a cool christmas present if they're into mario kart i feel so old because i was thinking oh when i was a kid we just had like this had like three things to play with yeah i know i know yeah Yeah. (laughs) um alex what yeah, do honestly, I, it looks awesome. It does look cool. Um, I, so, Alice, yeah, an image that I, I think is already synonymous for me uh, for documentary family photography is your awarded image of a child with like a monster slash dinosaur teeth looking to be yeah. eating them. Although yeah. I think it's like a, a playground or something, not a real dinosaur. I think, but it wasn't um, a real dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh... <laughs> I love the perspective. I love the perspective you use that shot. Can you tell us more about that one? You know how you captured yeah, it. It's a stuff? zoo. It's a fiberglass oh, okay. dinosaur at the um, the entrance or exit to a zoo. So oh, okay. I was doing a day in the life and we passed it on the way in and the way out. And that shot was on the way out. And I think I might have got some frames on the way in as well. Um, so the idea of it is the kid climbs in the back, stands up, sticks her head out and the parent takes a picture. Um, okay. So I actually got in to take a picture of the mom um, taking a picture of the kids in it um okay, yeah. yeah and i'm i think i'm allowed to say so it's um linda moak is um my client she's an amazing um family documentary photographer if anyone wants to look her up um so i, was, I wanted to capture her doing that because taking a picture of her kid for that for her as my client had an extra layer of meaning because it's what she does yeah that's um true. so then i just noticed i thought it was a really lovely scene when she'd finished, or I think it was either before she'd started after she'd finished, and I just got on the floor and got this view of the clambering out of the teeth <laughs> feeling. Because <laughs> the kid just doesn't stand there still for their picture. They kind of go for it. Um, and it's cap- trying to capture the way it feels to be a kid, um, that, perspe- that child's perspective. That's very and cool. Also, the child's perspective of being photographed by their parent as well. So, I'm now talking about two photographs at the same time. Um, <laughs> sorry, but um, but yeah, that's how that frame came about because originally I was capturing something else, and then I just saw this like perfect little frame, um, of this bottom clambering through these teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. I t- <laughs> It's so interesting to hear the story behind the shot like that. I think that's that's really interesting. Yeah, and as I say, it's such a cool shot. I always think of that shot when I think of family documentary photography. It's oh. awesome. Um, yeah, so if anyone's listening now, you know, whilst running or doing that, I, I listen to podcasts while do some, doing the dishes randomly. I quite like that. But if so, if you're doing that, you know, head to uh, thisreportage.com or thisreportagefamily.com and um, I'll show that image, uh, that award that uh, Alice was just talking about there. And I also, though, I personally also love your family story award and it's quite unique so far yes and then, and then it's almost a kind of it's almost a solo story i know i think there's only one frame that contains maybe more than one human i think um <laughs> there, there are a lot of sheep in it it's like so yeah can, can you tell us sheep. about yeah can you tell us about about that yes so um it's my mum actually oh, um, okay cool. so i did a day in the life of her for her but it wasn't for her really it was of her um i wanted to shoot a, a long a long sort of shoot where the person wasn't paying me so that I could sort of go through that process thinking with every frame like what do I want to see and what do I want to capture and what story do I want to tell because I think even when you're shooting for clients in a documentary style you still have you have them in mind you have the kids as as your sort of longer term client in your head or I do um so it's a bit of a technical exercise for me I guess really as well as been a personal thing to shoot um and it's, I think it's quite a visually interesting life that she has um, outdoors. So, 
Yeah. Does she live on a farm? or? Is yeah, it, so it? she breeds sheep. Um, mm. And then she, um, I'm not, I don't know how to talk about this stuff like properly, but she like makes the wool into wool. <laughs> spins oh, it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. So yeah. She breeds <laughs> sheep and like makes wool. Um, and then goes to, goes to so one of the frames is in or two of the frames are in a um wool shop where people go and take their own spinning wheels and they sit there with their own wool or wool they bought and they spin it and then i have a shot of her i think knitting later Mm -hmm. it's not there is it's like you know this sequence contains sped up images it's not the same wool that she was in Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah but um the, i think the last i think the last frame has this farming life on yes his, he's watching on, on the telly screen. and that yeah this is the weird thing it's like i kind of wanted to catch it what a bit what a slog that life is really yeah. um but then for relaxation like you know you would then watch a farming program in the evening <laughs> like, like a festival's holiday it's funny exactly isn't it? yeah yeah and i must say i was quite um pleased when that that um the titles came up on the screen i was like oh yes. yeah that is photographic <laughs> yeah. heaven that yeah. is yeah. <laughs> so i kind of just want to tell the story of the life and and that it's it's hard um but then yeah there's kind of fun bits in it and that the i guess the food side of it as well like and the nurture side um there's lots of elements to that story isn't there there really is i mean i want a narrative with to do with i guess the wool but um i guess the thing that i think i kind of was looking for in it that i think i found is that kind of almost maternal attitude to the sheep mm. which just comes through i mean what's re- so I, I i had about 200 shots from that as a finished project um right. And I think it's really interesting to put a story together where I can't remember, is it between 15 and 20? That's right, yeah. 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 And I think you really isolate the thing, what you want to show in the story you want to tell. Mm. And I think you could, you could tell any number of stories from, say, a longer shoot with a client, you could, if you take it down to that many. And I think it really helps you sharpen your point of, your point of view, what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm, it's cool. Cool. I love hearing your thoughts about that as well. It's so interesting. Yeah, I love that as well. I love it as well because, you know, I think a lot of people when they think of the term family photography, they instantly think of kids. But, you know, family can mean so much. It doesn't have to be, you know, just kids. There are so many different kind of relationships. You don't have to be, yeah. you know, blood related even. It's like a group of friends or yeah. so many different meanings of that word, really. I think it's wonderful these days. You no know, families aren't like 2.4 children anymore. Um mm. And it can be anything. I mean, I'm I'm doing a personal project for um, f- photographing a young woman who has autism, and she has an autism support cat. And I'm photographing oh, wow. the woman and her cat. They they do things like get the bus into town and go shopping together for food because wow. she finds that everyday activity too challenging to do on her own. So mm-hmm. it's a bit like having a guide dog. She takes the cat with her. Oh wow! I didn't um, even know that was um... yeah. So to me, like they're a family unit. Um, yeah, definitely. overseas student living in Cambridge. Well, she's not. She's now back overseas with her family. Um, so everything's on hold. Like so much. I'm, I'm right, really yeah. crossing my fingers we can pick it up again next year. But yeah, I, that sounds I totally really interesting. See the two of them as a family. Mm, oh, I totally agree with that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. And I am um, uh, I was talking to someone else on the podcast, actually. And have you watched um, Love on the Spectrum on Netflix? Which no. Is, oh, honestly, it's amazing. This uh, with about autistic people in, um, is in Australia, kind of like uh, young adults and getting them dating and things and honestly it's beautiful it's so well done like so non-exploitative you know it's just beautiful mm. really honestly I, I it's brilliant you should watch it it's so good so good oh look that up yeah yeah it's got i just find i find autism really interesting my wife is a speech therapist and she specializes in diagnosing autism so i just find it like really really interesting oh, really? but anyway that's a segue isn't it but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um alice what do you find the most challenging aspect of family photography to be um i think that you never that you walk you ring someone's doorbell and walk into their house and you have no idea what well you can look up their house you can you, you know you can talk to them in advance but generally you don't know what you're going to get mm. and, and i think that's actually the thing that i get a bit of a thrill out of that actually it's challenging but you're kind of up for the challenge that's um cool. yeah and you just never know 
what the light's going to be like, what they're going to do. I mean, I, I do do preparation with my with my family clients. So I know roughly what kind of activities are going to be doing and what the vague plan will be. But I always say this is plan A. And by the time I say goodbye, we might be on plan Z. And that totally, <laughs> it's just it's just nice to have a bit of an idea of what you think, where you think we'll go, whether we'll stay in, go out, etc. But anything can happen, anything. And to be in that mindset where you're kind of, you're standing back from them enough, observing enough, not chasing moments, but really standing back and anticipating what they might do next, um, kind of meeting them in their world, not telling them what to do. That is incredibly challenging. And the payoff is incredible. That's, oh, that's cool. I mean, that, that that kind of client expectation stuff is so important, isn't mm-hmm. it? I mean, I guess you you never get any clients these days who think that they're like just looking at you and posing all the time. You know, they definitely know that you're there to capture them like naturally. Would you get kids who pose sometimes, mm. like actually pose, like <laughs> like kind of a hand on a hip sort of thing, and you're like, oh god. But sometimes it's it's so extreme it's just funny I'm totally shooting that um oh yeah Mm. so I think it's really difficult you I work really really hard to prepare my clients to make them feel um like empowered to be themselves the whole thing is about being yourself um Mm -hmm. and I work really hard to do that but you can only go so far um and sometimes you get there and realize that they're a little bit more dressed up than you thought mm-hmm. they were going to be or they're doing oh, you mentioned most- earlier about like matching outfits do you have you had people wear matching outfits then it's so funny i'm really bad at noticing it in real life <laughs> i'll look at a picture and i'll be like oh <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really see it. um i have i have over the years had that and um yeah but i kind of i don't want to i'll say it all before and I'll talk to them before. And the, what the what's good these days is we can do Zoom consultations because everyone's so used to Zoom now. Oh yeah, so yeah. See each other, and I think that builds up the trust more and more. And I'll kind of do what everything I think I can. But then on the day, if I feel they're just not quite as ready as I hoped they would be, or, or as I thought I'd make them be to to trust me with a documentary approach, then they're just not ready. And if I said to them, okay, just before I start, I want half of you to go and get changed then it's not going to go well i'm going to mm-hmm. break that trust kind of even more so sometimes yeah. it's a bit of a process with clients um and i i'm photographing um a family um oh it's saturday i kind of didn't have it in my head <laughs> so I kind of, yeah. that's it. and i've photographed them several times before and i kind of um yeah i've had i've had a little chat about how i think it you know, it's perhaps time now to like totally trust me right yeah. yeah so everyone's different everyone's different yeah and that's the beauty of what we do as well isn't it yeah. and we get that insight into it and it's exciting as well. i know i talk about nerves but it is exciting that just coming across all different types of people all different types of walks of life and just getting in there and capturing it as well yeah yeah, yeah. Awesome. um in terms of you know getting your clients your families in, in, in terms of marketing and getting yourself out there what's what's been the most effective for you you know how do you how do you get your your bookings I'm really bad at analysing this, so I don't <laughs> technically know like exactly. But I, I generally, it's the fact that um, I think my client base is I've built it up over the years, and it's quite strong. And I, I kind of think of it as a bit of a client network. So it, there'll be a connection between people usually. Um, like I'll photograph a family that maybe I photograph one of their kids at nursery, and I'll think that's where they've come from. And I, I do ask them as well, but then it'll turn out i asked that they're in an nct class with an old client and they recommended oh, cool. okay. also recommended me like a couple of years ago and then i'll find i had one where it was like that and the dad turned out to work for the company that i'd just done a commercial shoot for oh anyway. wow so right. everything i think cambridge is one of those small cities where <laughs> we kind of say oh it's just, it's very small here a lot but there are lots of connections between people it's all I'm interlinked not, yeah i'm not amazing at like direct marketing really um, but that's cool though because it means you're doing a really really good job because people are just recommending you all the time hope so. hopefully mm. 
It's a great though, isn't it? You know, because I, I said I say before on this that some a lot of the time when people say kind of word of mouth or networking, I mean referrals, they say they're lucky, but it's it's not about being lucky. It's about being really good at what you do and making your clients happy, and then it's just a natural byproduct of that that they recommend you. So it's, it's yeah. also. I think leaving people happy is something I, I try really hard to do. Um, mm. And that doesn't just cover the, the photographs, but the products as well. Like leaving people with the products that mean they, they make the most of the photos, uh, right, the products yeah. that suit them. Like you can go in someone's house and you just know straight away they're book people because there's books everywhere. And then you think, right, well, an album is, is going to make you happy in a way it might not make the last client as happy. Yeah, that's true. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So getting to know them um yeah it's very That's rewarding cool. do you ever get nervous i don't know why i talk about nerves so often it's just something else. <laughs> I, I just find it interesting but do you, are you i guess are you past the point now like i remember when i started doing weddings you know years ago and i get nervous sending the clients you know their finished images to them you know mm-hmm. waiting to hear back from them or whatnot and i don't get nervous now for that because i always feel like i've done the best i could have ever done you know i always feel like that so but do you get nervous like handing over you know that kind of gallery or, or however you send your images to your clients the first time I sat with somebody and had to press the button on my iPad, my hand was shaking. I was, oh, I was right. really, really scared. In fact, the, I used to use a tripod for group shots because I was worried my hand would shake when oh. I was holding the camera. Yeah. So these things have kind of, I've got a bit better at that stuff. Um, so I, I started doing IPS in-person um say well in person service I try and think of it instead of sales <laughs> um, that, that's cool yeah I, I, I heard a doctor say that and I was like yes that's exactly what I need in my head instead of thinking I'm selling thinking that's I'm like good. giving them a service so I started doing that again a year or so ago and okay cool so physically showing people the pictures or now like zoom is a bit more sort of um usual and then seeing their reactions um I don't tend to get nervous I just feel excited and I know that they feel that too they've kind of got that nervous excitement like um what they're going to look like and so that's it kind of is a nice little bonding moment i think but then yeah has that helped in has that helped in overall kind of sales as well that in-person thing yeah yeah i think so i think just being able to show people things um Mm. um, oh it makes sense totally yeah um and i i love albums um i'm such a book person so it's nice to show people things in person and they can well i mean they can hold things so there's this whole like quarantine of samples you know shenanigans to sort of go through <laughs> these days but oh yeah like spraying yeah. everything like, yeah. yeah no one's touched the 10 by 10 for seven days please hold it <laughs> no it's fine yeah <laughs> that's funny that's funny i can i totally understand that kind of in-person thing and i, I just remember um just going back to my my weddings when i used to have clients over for meetings you know and I, i'd show them a slideshow I, I i was in the room the first time i showed a wedding slideshow and i found it the most cringeworthy like oh. four minutes to to be seeing other people looking at my work in this oh i, oh, I just found it so <laughs> cringy i hated it i really did so so now i always go and make them a drink whilst they're watching that slideshow oh, no. Yeah, the yeah. best thing I find is if so I've done a few where I haven't seen the screen because I use an iPad so they can hold uh, it. Um, right. And I just find that's a little bit more intimate. Also, um, it's just better than the laptop we've got, basically. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes, yeah. Sense. Um, that makes sense. But I, I, I've had a couple where I couldn't see the screen and I've noticed them, the, sort of the parents, um, like verbally reacting to the pictures. And then maybe there'll be a couple where they won't say anything. And I've I kind of made sure that I can always see the screen now because I need to learn from that experience. Like, what are they not reacting to? What isn't really doing it for them? And what is really making them go, oh, I love that one. What's getting that? What's making their heart thump? Because you can see it in their faces. That's so, so true. That, that's kind of like invaluable feedback, really, totally, isn't it? Totally, yeah. And what, what do they laugh at? Because I do, I do try and, and take the odd funny picture and... <laughs> it's sort of a black and white test do they laugh or not you know? yeah that's true yeah. yeah and you just wouldn't get that feedback in any other way no. you need to be seeing that yeah that's really really a really something I, don't, I haven't really thought about yeah that's really true that's really true and it's the first impression that, as well it's kind of if you get an email a week later it doesn't really give you the same information mm, that's true 
yeah yeah and it's great it's great it must be just great feedback to see them like just really happy with what you've produced yeah. for them as well yeah, it's yeah, rather than some about. words yeah it's because mm. i mean you know i photograph like you said about um photographing children or plants and i you know i mean i am potentially photographing plants too. <laughs> um, but the reason i think whether we photograph weddings or families um <clears throat> or engagement shoots whatever it is you photograph people not stuff because there's just so much more scope for the pictures to mean something and that's what it's all about for me it's, it's got to have meaning in it at the end of the day and to see that come through when someone sees a picture for the first time it just um yeah it ties it all together that's very cool yeah very cool totally agree there and it's like ultra job satisfaction as well to get that because that's something yeah. you know I, I i talk about weddings because i just shoot more obviously i've just shot more weddings than i have done families but mm. you don't get that kind of that feedback then you've done so much work you've poured yourself into it and then you've delivered those images and then often you may not hear back even for a few weeks but for, for you yeah. to get that it brings it all back together so nicely i think it's really hmm. Yeah, it can very... be hard as well if like you've taken a sort of arty shot maybe like you know usually without faces in or something mm. and um and there's just like tumbleweeds <laughs> <You're> like, oh! <laughs> that can be tough and then you know you never know which people are going to choose to go on the wall and mm. yeah and it's amazing when you get a client that has the same favorites as you've got that's that's oh, one that's cool but ultimately it's about leaving them happy so you yeah. know Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and so, it's funny you say about an arty shot. There is, there are definitely are certain types of images that kind of maybe appeal to photographers more on there. It's just, um, yeah, um, yes. yeah, and that's, yeah, you. I think there can be a difference when you're shooting for a client and you're shooting for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can have, <clears throat> you can have like sort of transition images especially if you've got a long session whether it's like a half day or a full day you have transition images which help the storytelling of the whole um collection of photos um and help the whole collection be be more than the sum of the parts but in themselves perhaps there are one or two pictures that you know you wouldn't expect the client to say oh that's my favorite but they've all got to have value they've all got to have something in it that get that kind of push your buttons as a photographer oh totally. um, that's so important isn't it otherwise you might as well be working for someone else or doing totally some... mm. and i love i've always loved details so i, I really like detail shots yeah, that's um, cool yeah yeah and they've come to you because they love your work that you're showing and you're showing the work that you love on your site as well so it's a win-win isn't it that's the golden rule show what you want to shoot um mm. i think one of the, the things when you're if you know if you're transitioning to documentary um it's really really hard to be, to be patient with yourself so i think when you start out and you think oh this is this is i found my niche is what i want to do you can't just overnight say right i'm now a documentary photographer and here's two pictures on my website that are really good and they're totally documentary and then you've got around them these other pictures which obviously aren't Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so showing the client what you want to shoot as a whole body of work as well as individual pictures I think is really important then clients will self-select they'll look at your website and go oh, actually no I'm not on the same way- wavelength as this person or oh my god I really am um, mm-hmm. and you want to you want to kind of get have those weird or wonderful ones in there that get the right people excited about working with you so true yeah or totally. Put off the, it totally would put off the wrong people so yeah that's just as important isn't it yeah like pictures which um kind of i sort of phrase it to my clients like tears and tantrums i'll say i will shoot through tears and tantrums and if you see me shooting a moment which feels feels like it might not be um the best moment of the day it's because i think there's a chance i'm going to get a photo you'll love or your kids will love um Mm. And then you show pictures like that on the website and people really, or, you know, Instagram or whatever, and people then really get what documentary is about, that it's not Mm. about smiling for the camera and it's not even about um, beautiful, candid moments. It's way, Mm. way, way more than that. It's about raw, real family life. And you just know that's an authentic moment. Um, And you know it's not set up and it's hopefully it's funny or it's, emotive or um yeah whatever you want your work to be 
That's very awesome. Yeah, awesome advice there, um, Alice. And yeah, really, really true. I think that is, is, is as you say, like the golden rule really is so mm-hmm. important, isn't it? So important. Yeah, and it just can take a while. It can take a while to sort of build up. But um, oh, the best feeling is when you take old stuff off your website. You're like, yeah. I don't need that anymore. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Have you got any on your website? Do you show any images from your like first year of family shoots? No. No. no yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't I have got um I think there are some old ones well I think of them as old maybe from like a few years ago but I mean I was all over the place and one of my very very first shoots ever that someone paid me for it was so documentary I didn't even speak <laughs> back oh, wow. and I'm like what oh, fucking hell was saying thought of me but I didn't say anything I was like okay I'm a fly on the wall I'll be <laughs> silent and um, so zero direction at all but um that's not the way to look after your client. You know, you do need to hold their hand a little bit, um, mm. not through direction, but through everything you do, like chatting, just talking yeah. to them. Um, yeah, I mean, because otherwise they'd be on edge, wouldn't they, if you were just standoffish and like, <laughs> silent now? <laughs> you know, I totally cringe at so so many things that I did. And I'm sure <laughs> I look back and cringe at everything I'm going to do like tomorrow, I'm sure. But that's, <laughs> that's you know, beauty. That's a good of- way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, let, let's change tack again slightly, okay. Alice. Okay. I, I, I know very, a bit of a random question, but if you could choose one day in your life to live over and over again, like Groundhog Day, have you seen Groundhog Day? Yes. That's cool. Okay. If you could choose the day to live over and over again, which day would it be? Um, I'm really bad at this type of question. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Um, I would perhaps, pick a day from my childhood so that with every day of reliving it the awareness of it would build to an almost slightly grown up appreciation of it Mm. I don't know if that would happen but I guess if you do something a hundred times you start to like cognitively like understand it a bit better so the idea of living a childhood day with an adult head that's true appreciation of which I think is is it is perhaps for a lot of us who do this job, um, what we're trying to capture, we're trying to capture that that joy of childhood or of family time when you haven't got the adult head on. Does that even make sense? I'm not that, sure that, that makes sense. <laughs> in the in the I think that was great. I love the way you managed to bring that to uh, to uh, what we do as well, to, to the documentary families as well. Yeah, I think that was really it on random. <laughs> Is there any particular day in your childhood? No, I can't think of anything. <laughs> but I, I, just, I, I, grew, I was born by the sea. And I'd, I'd love to go back to the sea. So that's kind of my like, happy place, really. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. You're quite far. Cambridge is quite far from the sea, isn't it? We're, we're like an hour and a half to two hours from Norfolk. Um, right. Okay. Yeah, so I, I love Norfolk. Um, yeah. I'm quite lucky. I mean, I'm, my nearest beach is only like eight minutes drive oh, away. No. Oh, I, yeah. I am lucky it is lovely uh-huh. uh, growing up down here it is. Uh-huh. but then it's just so far to travel to everywhere you know you pay that price you know yes. traveling where else in the UK. especially going to Cam- sorry <laughs> oh, no, sorry i just say especially going to cambridge for me is really hard from cornwall it's like proper cross country it takes yeah. ages also yeah. we, we've never been on holiday there because we can't be asked to drive all that yeah long. it's so far yeah. it's like from you i don't know it's like five and a half six hours yeah. you know it's a fair yeah. way really um, yeah. but i've done it i've shot weddings there in cambridge and then drove back the same night so i'm not back to like half three four in the morning mm-hmm. it's, it's mental i do say um, i'll shoot anywhere in the uk and i have traveled for shoots and um i i nearly had a shoot down i can't quite remember where it was but it was sort of in the south um west i have to think the shredded wheat thing which way around is it? <laughs> i it's do terrible. that as well never eat shredded wheat yeah, yeah i do that yeah the southwest <laughs> and it was going to be like a full day and it was going to be amazing it just didn't happen so it was, it's nice to get out and about to different places um mm. yeah that's true um by the way before researching for this interview i'd only ever seen your profile pic you know really quite small like thumbnail size okay. and i thought it was, I, I thought it was your arm in the oh, picture no. um, which look i thought looked to be like heavily tattooed <laughs> yeah. it was only oh, it was no. only I then when i saw it. your <laughs> it was only when i saw it big that i realized that's not your arm it's a child's arm and is it and it's not tattooed that's my it's a child stylist <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> it's and, and it's a child's clothing though, isn't it? It's not tattooed arm. It's not your tattooed arm at all. No. <laughs> that's my um I think she was about that's my daughter. It's a few years old. Um oh. and um she yeah, and she's just got it said sleeve. Yeah, she was doing my hair. Oh I yeah, and like that. So, no, and, and it's so funny. I mean, well, obviously, when you see it big, you see that. But when it looks small, I did think that was your arm, like touching your hair, and like okay, you've got I'm loads totally of tattoos. changing that project. Is <laughs> anyone that thinks, why would I have my hair like that if I'm not got a child's hand on my head? It's I think funny. I need to change that. <laughs> I'm not very good at like being the other side of the camera. Well, you, I, you just never, I would never think about what it looks like really small, that's all. And it's, it's probably only me who thinks it looked like a, your tattooed arm. That's just oh, me. I don't have any tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. Um, so, okay, as well as your own photography, which you mentioned earlier as well, that you also offer mentoring, which is fab. Yeah. Can, you, can you tell us a bit more about that? You know, what you offer, you know, how you carry it out in case you know, anyone wants to get in touch with you? Yeah, so I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring um, for photographers. Um, um, it's Doom sessions, um, which is, you know, <laughs> the latest thing to do. Um, <laughs> yeah. but I, I'm hoping to get back into doing in-person sessions as well. So I can do shooting in the field sessions where I'll work with a photographer for half a day and we'll actually arrange a portfolio build shoot. And I will literally, like, be over their shoulder looking at their settings Um helping them basically navigate those challenges of a documentary um practical shoot like how on earth you get the shots that are in your head when you can't control where people are what's mm -hmm. happening where the light is um i find that really rewarding it's just it just feels like just talking about it, it just feels weird it just feels impossible right now so hopefully we can get back to doing that next mm -hmm. year so oh, it's kind of it's only Zoom at the moment. So I mentor on um, creative, technical or business things. So what I don't have is a sort of ready-made course that people sort of jump on. It's, it's all geared towards the person and where they're at. So That's there might cool. be someone who is like, is pretty good creatively, but is really struggling technically or someone who's great with creativity and technicals, but is struggling with the business side. Um, and I think the one thing, the thing I I do I'm really passionate about is the business side. I don't think of myself as a photographer. I think of myself as a photography business owner. Um, mm, that's interesting. And I've got you know all these hats to wear. Um, being a mm. photographer is just one of them, and it's the best one, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, the business side is so important, isn't it? Yeah, and I I love it. I mean, I said I'm not you know I don't think of myself as this marketing whiz, but there's lots of other sides of the business that I do. I think. Um, I, I do take quite a natural to and I wanted to run my own business before I wanted to be a photographer I just didn't quite know what I wanted to do I always wanted a shop actually yeah right um, what, what kind of shop I didn't really care like <laughs> I wanted a shop by the sea I think just you know. nice so, yeah. yeah um print shop by the sea would be lovely mm. but I think when you start getting good at a creative thing I think that there's you get a lot of um people will start to comment they'll say oh you're really good you should charge people and the person who says that has really good intentions but they have no clue what mm. they're actually saying or whether it's good for you or not so mm. monetizing hobbies I think is quite it's quite a problematic thing it just mm. isn't for everybody and there are people who start up in business because they they have a hobby they love and then they lose the hobby to the business and maybe they don't have strong business skills and then the whole thing falls apart Mm. and I think that we talk about ed educating ourselves with the skill to get good at the skill which we can then monetize and make a living from but we don't always educate on the business side so mm. um I've always said I'm like I'm as happy in Excel as I am in Lightroom <laughs> that's but, cool I like that yeah, phrase that's yeah <laughs> and then and I really enjoy that side of things so I find that really rewarding men mentoring people on like business planning and financial planning my cuckoo clock's going off again. Sorry, I bet you can't even hear it. I can't okay. hear it. No, it's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, it's, yeah, that's cool though. That's cool. I'm, I'm I'm with you, you know, on that. I enjoy the business side as much as the photography side. Really, I think I really do. I think there's. I mean, if you are self-employed, there's a reason you're self-employed. It's you know because it's mm. it. There are so many challenges working for somebody else. There are many mm. more with yourself, but at least you kind of you have that autonomy. But it's really hard and. Um, I think so many people find that once you become self-employed 
um, the work-life balance is shot. Um, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. your pay per hour might be terrible. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, and we were having, I think, a chat before before we actually started recording about how, you know, when you are employed, you can just swivel your chair around and talk to someone from IT mm -hmm. and you've got to do it all yourself. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. So true. Um, so it, there are so many things and it can be emotionally really tough, psychologically really tough and logistically tough. So I like to think that I can I can help people with that. And um, that's cool. I have a, a background in um, got quite a lot of management experience, team management um mentoring. I'm a qualified coach as well. Yeah, oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. So business coaching. Um, That's, it seems that it's very natural for you to go into mentoring then I think with that, with all yeah, those skills yeah. that you have. I yeah. Think. I remember yeah. I set up a mentoring scheme in the company I worked for um, once and yeah. So it, it's funny, you know, you, you think of all these years doing other things, but I think you can always pick out something from them, which actually is useful in what you're doing now. Mm, um, that's cool yeah transferable things but the thing i think i i actually love the most is um is mentoring on creative so critiquing so helping people like read their own pictures like what's really strong um uh, yeah. how it could be stronger how you could shoot it again next time even better um mm. would you think of going to this part of the room to do it you know because once you've taken i don't know how many like three million pictures mm -hmm. you, there's just this it just builds up and up and up um and mm -hmm. you, um you know you can sometimes offer insights that people might not have thought of because they've only taken like 1000 pictures mm -hmm. that's so true yeah 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 no awesome uh, awesome and if anyone's interested obviously do, do you head to this reportage.com or this reportage family.com and i'll include a link through to alice's uh, site there with your mentoring details as well it's awesome um Alice, this it's gone got over an hour now, I think, and it's gone so quickly. I was really surprised oh, yeah. just looking down the clock then. Um so uh -huh. we've got time for just one more question. Okay. Um that's okay. I've really enjoyed chatting to you. Thank you. It's been fab. So um what would be your top tips to help someone become better at the documentary side of family photography specifically? If you yeah. So um trust the process is okay. my top tip. Um this goes back to the trust that I was talking about earlier. So there, there is a well-known process of how to do a documentary family session. Um, and it, I, from my personal experience, I know that it can take a while to completely trust that and to, to perhaps unlearn things. So if, if you're looking for tips, I'm guessing that you're someone who is transitioning or hasn't done that much of it. So it may well be that there are things to unlearn and that's to do with directing to do with setting things up. Um, and, it, you need to take a leap of faith with it and you need to believe that once you completely have your hands off the um the action that these moments will just happen all by themselves that are so much better than anything you could have um like directed or suggested to happen so much better and you can tell when you see the picture that they're real so hands off don't direct trust and then it you'll see you'll see that evidence coming through in the photos that you take that's very cool very cool great advice great advice in a great kind of soundbite way as well at the end i love that, that was oh awesome i know I thought that, yeah it doesn't sound quite as rambly as <laughs> probably the rest <laughs> oh it was great oh alice thank you so much for that thank you i really enjoyed chatting to you Oh, it's been such a pleasure. Oh, you're so it just there's so much there as well. So open and you gave so much, um, shared so much. And it was just really fun talking to you. I really enjoyed it. It's really cool. Oh, I love I love talking about and get a bit geeky about this stuff. But um I feel there's like I could go on for hours, but obviously oh, yeah. no, we won't. We won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I said before, anyone's listening, head to thisreportage.com or thisreportagefamily.com and I'll include a link through to Alice's site as well as the that specific dinosaur-eating child uh, image that we spoke about <laughs> earlier. <laughs> oh, no, but Alice, um, honestly, that was so cool. Thank you. And hopefully I'll get to meet you, you know, when actual real-life people can meet in real yes, life again. That'd if that cool. ever happens again. Yeah, because I heard mm. you do, um, you do like, oh, I can't remember. Oh, we'd have a party like, at Christmas. Days, doc days or something? Like. Oh, and Doc 
Yes, which is awesome. That's that's really cool. Mm-hmm. And normally every year we do a TIR Christmas party as well in London. Oh. It's not that not that far from Cambridge. So, but obviously not this year, but um, next year. Yeah. So, it, yeah. which is which is going to be joint for family and wedding people. So it's going to be. It's hopefully next year it'll be a huge party. That'll be great. That'll yeah, be I think really everyone good. will be ready for a huge party so by next true. Christmas, so won't we? True. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it'll we'll be great all get to meet through you. it one day at a time. We will, we will, won't mm. we? We will. Um, yeah, and if you're ever down in Cornland, give me a shout. Yes, yes. I never know. I might um, come down for work sometime. Yeah, it'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, mm. thanks so much. It's been lovely talking to you. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Um, you stay safe and, uh, uh, yeah, as I say, hopefully meet you some point. Yes, yes. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the 51st episode of the This Is Reportage podcast. It was a real pleasure to chat to Alice there. Hope you enjoyed it too. Head to thisisreportage.com or thisisreportagefamily.com to see that specific Reportage Family Award that Alice talks about in the episode, as well as a link through to her website too. We have lots more episodes of the podcast released with photographers such as Ross Harvey, Frank Boutonnet, Else Corsten, Dominique Shaw of York Place Studios, who, alongside her brother Liam, photographed Alice's family, as she mentioned in the episode, Rocio Vega and many more too. If you're not yet a member of This Is Reportage or This Is Reportage family, check out all the benefits of joining us, including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 individual award and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, exclusive discounts, hours of educational videos featuring tips and advice from some of the world's best photographers, and much more too. We're currently accepting submissions to our final collections of 2020. The deadline is the same for our wedding site, This Reportage, and our family site, This Reportage Family. Submit by 2359 GMT on 23rd of November 2020. No poses, nothing staged, This Is Reportage. And this is bye for now. Mm-hmm.